the 13 bloodlines of the Illuminati. Today, the Illuminati is represented by 13 specific bloodline families, along with a few associate families. You would be surprised at the names that are part of this elite group of people. Some of the names you know, and some you don't know. And others you had no idea was a part of this. At this time, the Rothschild is the head of the Illuminati and controls and owns international banks. So how did the Rothschild family come to own the banks and virtually everything? Mayor Amschel Rothschild took over his father, Moses Amschel Rothschild's bank in Frankfurt, Germany. He conducted business with Prince William XI of Hesse-Hanna, became a close associate, and the prince's court factor. During this time, Rothschild realized that he could make a way bigger profit lending money to governments and royalty than to the individual person because the loan sizes are larger and are secured by the country's nation's taxes. Nathan Mayer Rothschild, head of the Rothschild after father's death, opens banking house in England, N.M. Rothschild and Sons. Solomon Rothschild opens one in Vienna, Austria, M. Von Rothschild, Uno Soho, and Jacob James Rothschild opened one in Paris. De Rothschild Frere. Nathan Mayer Rothschild invested $3 million of Prince William's fortune, in which Mayer Rothschild never returned, into gold. The Rothschild brothers supplied gold to Wellington's British Army via Nathan in England, while they also supplied Napoleon's army with gold via Jacob in Paris. This is where the Rothschilds first started funding both sides of the war. Wars generate huge amounts of risk-free debt which are guaranteed from a country's government and the efforts of the citizens of that nation. Since the Rothschild brothers were financing both sides of the war, then it did not matter who lost because the loans are given only as a guarantee that the winner will pay the debt of the losing side. This is still going on this day. Every war that has happened was caused and financed by the Rothschild family and the other elite bloodlines. The Rothschild brothers set up an unprecedented postal service, web of concealed routes, and speedy runner carriers through their banks, Europe-wide, so that they could always be a step ahead of current affairs and events. Nathan Rothschild then tricked the other traders into believing that the British lost by privately ordering his workers to start selling consoles. Consoles was the name of the British bonds that were traded at the stock exchange. Believing that they, the British, had lost the war to the French, the traders started to sell consoles at a rapid rate, which devastated the console, where its value dramatically dropped. Then, Nathan Rothschild turned around and again privately told his workers to buy up all the consoles that they could, and when the news came that the British actually won the war, the console's value skyrocketed to a level higher than it was before the war came to an end. Since Nathan Rothschild got a 20 to 1 return on his deceptive and bloody investment, the Rothschild family owned and controlled the entire British economy, which after the war became the financial center of the world. The Rothschilds built a new bank of England, where they stopped shipping gold internationally and used their five banks throughout Europe to establish a paper debit and credit system. Sounds familiar? By the turn of that century, the Rothschild family controlled half of the world's wealth. The Illuminati's conquest did not stop there. They had to gain control of the United States economy also. Now that the Rothschild family basically owned England, and England was running the American colonies, the Rothschilds controlled the American economy. But when it came time for America to renew the First Bank of the United States with the Rothschilds, America forfeited renewal. Because of this refusal, Nathan Rothschild in 1812 ordered and financed the British to declare war with America. 
The reasoning for this was to make America go into depth and weaken from fighting the war so that they would easily allow Rothschild's U.S. First Bank to be renewed. In 1833, President Andrew Jackson overthrew the Central Bank by not renewing the charter for the Second Bank of the United States. For 80 years, the United States had control of their money supply until 1913, when they bought President Woodrow Wilson through all Andrew Jackson's work out the window when he signed the Federal Reserve Act, giving the control of the United States back over to the international bankers, the Rothschilds. So today, the U.S. currency is controlled by the Rothschilds dynasty.